Hey guys, welcome back to the another practice round for the Disc Golf Valley Player Store, week four, coming into next. This is Highlander's Ridge with a default bag, so the bag that you use in every one of your rounds. Got a tough right to left wind here, so this is most of the time going to be an accurate roll musket. With this wind, I'm going to go accurate wind break to get a little bit of slide. I'm going to slide to the slide on the ground plate, that is. I'm going to slide to the left, aim that top chevron down right to the side of that bush. And usually about a disc and a half of hyzer for a neutral wind. Go a little bit extra here for that three wind. I'm going to fight against it and hopefully slide down on that hillside a little bit. That one is able to get us there in range. So let's see if we can get one next with a more neutral or a different wind to give you a better look at a, a typical line there. Last week's player store really showed a lot of how much adjusting for wind is so important. Here's a big tailwind, so I'm going to go that disc of uh, hyzer instead of the disc and a half, my neutral. A big tailwind, I'm going to take a little bit off that. I wonder if an explorer might be better here. I don't bag one, so I don't know. But that did get up next to the basket. On a neutral wind, let's see if we get one here this time. There's a more neutral wind. Accurate old musket, slide left almost all the way. Top chevron on the top of that bush, and about a disc and a half of hyzer. You're going to get up on this hillside and have a little bit of a throw in left. Gets rid of the risk of going long. You can putt this or throw it in. If there's anything more than a one wind, I prefer to putt it. When the one wind, I'd throw in at about 30 feet, so about half the typical putt power. 57, or half the typical 60 foot power. This downhill, just keep that default and a 60-foot putt downhill is going to end up right there in the chains. Let's move on to hole two. Hole two, I've lamented a lot about the randomness of this hole. I give credit this line to Rodney. Your accurate roll musket, and the top chevron on the top of that mando, and about a disc of hyzer. Or an hyzer. With that wind, I'm going to take just a little bit off of that to make sure that I don't go flying long right over the top of that wall. And with any luck, you're kicking down here right by the basket. So the musket is taking a little bit off for that tailwind. Typically, I'm going to be throwing this with the accurate roll sapphire. So my more typical line, let's see if we can get a easier neutral wind here. There we go. So I'm going to go accurate roll sapphire, slide right, top chevron right on the top of the mando, and a disc of anhyzer. Hugs just around that window or that mando and knocks down here by the basket. If you get an ace here, realistically, it's a lucky ace. Uh, it's a lucky ace, you might get an unlucky par by kicking to the puddles. This one, I don't know, I used to think it's really random. Rodney showed me that line. It's been consistent since it's been working so far. All right, here on Highlanders Ridge 3, if you get a big wind, you can try and take advantage going a light glide disc and just really hang it out there. Obviously not something I practice a lot because that's a, not a good line. Uh, to get up there, maybe a lucky bounce. Oh. No. So the wind, that's some multiplier. I'd have to test it. But realistically, in, in the event, what I'm taking here is a glide water skip drive. Aim down and just let that wind take it across just to be somewhere safe on the landing zone. That's the goal there. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, i got to get it in the basket before I can get a new wind without restarting here. Here's 262. I'm going to get my warship up there. Get some trees on the way, I hope. Nope. And still stay there. They're going to put it in for what would be birdie, but I took the rethrow, so I think it's going to be bogey here. Yeah, so, yeah, the wind, you can take advantage of the light glide and play around a bit more with finding an angle there if you want to test that. My ideal in these practice lines is to find what's my typical throw. So this is the one wind. My typical throw here is going to be a glide skip drive on forehand. I slide left and aim the top chevron where this light part of the rock meets the hillside. And I go just over a half disc of Anheuser, about three quarters even. And this gets across here. If you get it just right, which this one isn't there, it's going to skip up and give you even a potential eagle look. This maybe got there. Now it could have gone a bit more, so I wouldn't be running this for eagle in the player's tour without this clean look at it. I like to be about 150 or so before I'm running that eagle. So if I get 165, I'm taking the harp in there with about 165 of power. 
to just roll up here next to the basket. Let's see if I can shoot one more in a different wind to my more typical backhand line going at this. That's that forehand line. The forehand line, if there's even a one headwind, it gets pretty tricky. So this two wind, a little bit of a headwind there, wouldn't work out. So I'm going to take this top chevron, line up with the side of the wall, and then drop it all the way down to this front shore side. And then it's a matter of adjusting for the wind. This two wind right to left will give me about a half disc of Anheuser on here. I go glide water skip just for a little extra safety in case I run that out a little bit too far too far wide. Most of the time here, you end up behind this rock anyway without a real eagle look at the basket, which is why in a competitive round that's multiplayer where I want to be a little bit more aggressive, I'm taking the forehand line. But I can take the hope just up over the... Whoopsie. <laughs> Got a little uh, too quick there. Here I can take maybe the fuse, get a little bit more height on it. Fuse up over the top. Should be able to get the trees. Slow me down to be able to get that green. If you get a little pinch and you're pinched off there and you want to get a little safer, you can take a, a harp or something like that around the side here. And you still get pretty close for a throw-in. This is probably one of the trickier holes that you're going to be getting on Highlanders Ridge, or that I think anyway. It has a lot of possibilities for a big scoring separation. Eagle is in play with the right forehand, but also big numbers are in play with misses there. So I getting safe is a big goal. All right, HR4 is an accurate light sapphire. I aim down, slide left, and the goal is just get to this landing zone. It's another one, uh, have some separation. Some people will get aggressive and try to land on that bridge. Uh, in a one wind, I have a decent line, but I'm not even going to mess around with it here. 369 in a headwind. This is a glide roll rive. Without the headwind, you can often get across here with a musket or a sapphire just fine, but the headwind and the, where the headwind pushed me a bit further back makes you disc up to the rive here. Got lucky hanging on there. Maybe could have given that a bit more height. I'm going to rotate around this bridge and go and toss it in there. So the main play there is accurate glide sapphire to landing zone, a musket or sapphire, if there's a big wind like that, the rive across the water to the green, and then making the putt in. Five here. Oh, I got some big wins to show you guys. I get a lot of dead skips here. So I just put the middle chevron there on that shadow. And with this wind, I'm going to go straight pull back and just try and get up around the corner there. This is another one that has a possibility to run it for the eagle. Uh, I'm adding like 20 or 30 feet to run it for the eagle. I think the smart play, if you're not confident, is just throw it to the base there. Don't risk going long. Uh, let's see if I can make some magic here. Go about 110 with the three headwind. That is able to sink that in there to get that eagle. Most of the time, just take plenty of power off, throw it near the base. I'm going to really be playing what my confidence looks like on that hole. Uh, sorry, about a, about a half disc of Anheuser, if that's a more neutral wind. Six is an accurate old musket, aim slightly down, and a little bit of Anheuser with a neutral wind. But with this three wind, I'm going straight back, even a little bit of hyzer, just to get me up there to landing zone. I'm not trying to get aggressive to ace this or even get super close. If you're in that landing zone, you have a good shot at making that next putt. So let me see if we can do it one more time, see if we can get an actual neutral wind. This practice round, I've been giving some crazy wins. Accurate old musket slightly down to the water's edge, and then adjust some Anheuser just to get across there. It's a very rare occasionally that leaks out if you're not quite right on your angle, but most of the time, even if you're a little bit off, that's going to check out before it goes to our OB. Let's move on to hole seven. Highlanders Ridge seven. This is one where I think it's very important to have the accurate windbreak musket or some sort of accurate ground play disc. By ground play, I mean a water skip, windbreak, something that's not sticky and not skip. So for me, the musket, I am straight down. It's kind of hard to see that kind of shadow where that top chevron's pointing right there. And with a two right to left wind, this is a straight pullback. Ideally for me, this is bouncing just before the OB line and sliding up that hillside a bit more. That didn't slide up very much, so it's making the adjustments for the throw in. This is about a 20 foot adjustment for the hillside, but I have the two right to left wind, which is also going to add about 20 feet. So I'll go about 70 power. We'll be able to get me there because 68 was 70 feet already. 
and the two headwood was pushing me more. This one, unfortunately, with the heavy winds that come here on seven, eight, and nine, a lot of this is going to be practicing to learn the different wind adjustments. I think it's real important when you're learning the wind adjustments to learn your tolerances. What I mean by that is if it's a three or a four right to left wind, what's the furthest you're going to go to the left? Know what's the furthest possible is do with Anheuser and the furthest possible hyzer you're going to do. Once you have those, you know you're not going to at least miss, at least not going to miss incredibly bad one way or the other. So get into practice mode a bit, uh, figure out in the hard winds what is the most adjustments you're going to make. I find that helps me a lot too on like Pioneer Bay 6, I think it is. I might be thinking of 7, where you get the steep Anheuser off the tee. It's a very small window of tolerance there. So know the tolerance for different winds to learn it. Um, glad to get Paradigm off the tee on 8 for me here. This wind is incredible if I can get it right. Uh, let's see if I can slide this up there with a great wind. You want a flippy skippy driver. Nah, I didn't commit anywhere near enough of that. You want a flippy skippy driver for this one to try and hit that gap and get up there for the eagle look, if that's what you're going for. If you're not going for the eagle look, it's really fine. Take a glide roll or glide water skip drive and just get it in the opening. If you get in the opening in the gap, you'll be able to throw up and get a fairly reasonable, simple looking birdie. Uh, let's get a little crazy and try something here. See if we can get that in. Yeah. I've worked on those. They're fun to throw. Let's see if I can show you a more normal one, though, without trying the aggressive line. Now, obviously, the aggressive line didn't even work out the first time. So a glide water skip drive, most you're going to have. Aim in a one wind just under the basket and just a little bit of Anheuser on that disc. Again, the whole goal is just get to this landing zone here in the opening. Once you're here in the opening... You're going to be thrown up to get close to the birdie. So it's 248. I take the throw-in distance of my disc. So this warship was about 240 for the throw-in. And so I'm not throwing this in, but the elevation helps that that throw-in distance is pretty good for lining up what the layup's going to be. So it's 240 throw-in disc, so 240 is going to be a layup with this elevation change to get close. Main goal here, just again, hit that landing zone. If you want to get aggressive, take a, take a flippy skippy driver and try and skip it up there and then add some 30, 40 feet. The elevation changes are different. You have to practice those elevation changes. This whole nine, this one I throw very different than a lot of people. Who I see taking an accurate roll sapphire up high. I like to take an accurate roll musket down low and really rely on my throw in. I want to get between 60 and 80 feet. Get down low so the wind's not a factor and try and not get down here. Try and get that a little bit further to the left, it looks like it would work. This 60 feet though, with the two wind, 20 feet elevation change, I will go right about 60. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a tough one, that's why you really don't want to be down here. Let's see if I can adjust that a little more upwards. And then I'm gonna get back to that T for you guys. Yeah, 60 would've worked if I had gotten around the uh, obstacle there. Let's see a more normal one where I'm not ending up way out there. One wind, good opportunity to show it. Get the low musket and get it out here to this landing zone. I think if I get to this last strip and a little bit to the right, I'm looking good. 70, I'm going to add about 10 feet of power for getting up this hillside. It's close enough no matter where you are down the hill. That 10 feet of power with a good number to add. So I'm going to go with 80 and go and throw that in there. Hopefully something you saw in here helped. If you want to see more on these, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you, you know when each new video is coming out. Also, you know, keep me motivated to keep making more and have fun with this. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck this next week. Stay bogey-free.